Being self-aware benefits all areas of your life. People who rate high in self-awareness are better at building and maintaining relationships, communication, and decision-making. In fact, studies show that 83% of top performers rate high in self-awareness skills. However, research by psychologist Tasha Yurick shows that 95% of us think we're self-aware, when in reality, only 10 to 15% of us actually are. Therefore, it goes without saying that there's tremendous value in learning how to become more self-aware. And according to Tasha Yurick, you probably need to. So to that end, this video is all about becoming more self-aware, and I'll show you how to do that using the fight or flight response. To understand the fight or flight response, you need a basic understanding of how your brain works. Now, I covered this topic in detail in my video here, but I'll give you a quick recap. Your brain has two regions that help keep you alive. The first is your thinking brain, and it's responsible for all high-level thought, like planning, processing, and creating. All of this processing power comes at the expense of being slow. So in short, your thinking brain is smart, but slow. The second region is your reacting brain, and it's responsible for making lightning fast decisions that keep you alive, like jumping at the sight of a snake. Now this speed comes at the expense of lacking logic. So you can think of your reacting brain as being fast, but dumb. Anytime you feel threatened or strong emotions, your body shuts off the thinking brain and passes information directly to the reacting brain in an attempt to keep you alive. When this happens, your ability to think logically is impaired. And as a result, this is when many people make poor decisions, like saying something they don't mean in the middle of a heated argument. The reason this is important is because if you can learn to identify when the fight or flight response is active, then you could also learn to identify when your thinking is impaired. The name fight or flight response doesn't really tell the whole story. There's actually a third F. We also freeze in response to threats. So knowing this, here's a quick overview of the freeze, flight, and fight responses. The freeze response protects you from threats because objects that aren't moving are both quiet and hard to see. So you can think of it like this. A grizzly bear that cannot see or hear you also cannot eat you. You might have personally experienced the freeze response if you've ever froze after hearing a scary noise in the dark or were lost for words after somebody said something insulting. The flight response keeps you safe by increasing the distance between you and your threat. And you can do this by either running away or avoiding the threat altogether. You might have personally experienced the flight response if you've ever jumped at the sight of a snake or avoided a party when you found out that your ex would be there. The fight response refers to both physical and verbal fights, and it works by either disabling your opponent or scaring them away. You might have personally experienced the fight response if you ever got in an argument or defended yourself from a bully. All right, here's how you can use the fight or flight response to identify when your thinking is impaired. Anytime you experience the fight or flight response, your body directs its resources to life-saving functions. A few examples might be an increase in heart rate, dilated pupils, and tense muscles. At the same time, your body also shuts down non-essential functions like reproduction and digestion. This shift in resources produces a list of physiological symptoms, and you can use those symptoms as clues that tell you that your thinking is impaired. Here's a list of symptoms. Increase in heart rate, increased breathing rate, red face, pale skin, cold or clammy hands and feet, tense muscles, dilated pupils, increased focus towards hearing, nausea, shaking, strong emotions like fear, anger, and anxiety, clenched jaw or fists, and an increased desire to run, raise your voice, or fight. Learning to recognize these symptoms can be challenging, and that's because when your thinking brain is impaired, it can be hard to pay attention to anything. But you can overcome this problem by learning to become more aware of the sensations in your body. And you can do that with the following three steps. Step number one is focus on what you feel a few times per day. To do this, you might pay attention to how your feet feel on the floor, your watch feels on your wrist, or your sheets feel against your skin. The goal with this exercise is to simply become aware of how your body feels. Step number two is pay attention to how different emotions make your body feel. So the next time you feel strong emotions, pay attention to what you're feeling. You might notice that anger makes you feel a rush of energy, stress makes you feel a tightness in your chest, and sadness makes you feel a pit in your stomach. The main goal with this exercise is to become aware of the connection between your emotions and how you feel. And step number three is figure out what sensations shut off your thinking brain. 
So the next time you recognize that you weren't thinking clearly, maybe you overreacted at work when you felt overwhelmed, pay attention to what you feel. In this case, that might be a tightness in your chest. Well, moving forward, you can use that feeling, a tightness in your chest, as a clue that tells you that your thinking might be impaired. All right, before I go, I wanna explain how you can use this information to make better decisions. So once the fight or flight response becomes active and your thinking brain shuts off, it can take anywhere from six seconds to 20 minutes for your thinking brain to turn back on. Therefore, if you recognize any fight or flight symptoms and you believe that your thinking is impaired, one of the best things that you can do before making important decisions is wait. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're in a meeting and your boss says something insulting and you feel this immediate need to react. Well, in this case, you'd be better off taking a deep breath and then giving your thinking brain the six seconds it needs to re-engage before you respond. Now, if you're really upset, then the saying, walk it off, exists for a reason. And that's because by waiting 20 minutes, you allow your brain chemistry to return to normal and you regain your ability to think logically. I can't thank you enough for watching this video and I hope it was helpful. Now, I am shamelessly trying to grow this channel, so it would mean the world if you could subscribe, like, and share the video. Believe it or not, it takes over 100 hours to make these videos, so any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.